Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be focusing on pH curves and indicators from the acid and bases topic of the A-level chemistry curriculum. So let's get started. So now looking into pH curves. So there's four main types of pH curves that you need to be aware of. Um, so starting with a strong acid and a, a, a bit, and a strong base being added to that strong acid. So if we have strong acid in the flask, so we're starting with a very a low pH, so around one to two, um, and we would end up to a very high pH, so around thirteen uh, to fourteen, uh, when the um, when the base would be in excess, and the neutralization would occur um, around pH pH seven. Um, so strong acid, uh, so strong, uh, sorry, weak base being added to a strong acid. So again, we would still start with a very low pH of around 1 to 2. But now because it's a weak base, uh, we won't finish around 13 to 14. It would be around, uh, let's say, 10 uh, to 12. So in this case, it could be any anything above 7 could be a weak base. Uh, but in this case, it looks like it would be around 10. And the neutralization uh, would occur below 7 uh, because we have a strong acid. Uh, so this would be below 7. And we could have a strong base added to a weak acid. So we would not start um, at 1 or 2 uh, because it's a weak acid. So it would be above 2. Um, and because it's a strong base, we would finish off at around 13 to 14. Uh, pH when the base is in excess and the neutralization would occur above uh, pH 7 and finally weak acid and weak base so weak base being added to weak acid so we're starting around 3 to 4 that pH it's a weak base and we finish off around so in this case it's a very low um, still a very low pH so just above 7 so 8 or nine um, it won't, it's because it's a weak base the neutralization would occur uh, around seven okay so you need to be aware of equivalence point now this occurs when the moles of H plus are equal to the moles of OH minus and so they will just cancel each other out and this will be the equivalence point also called and uh, the neutralization point so if we're looking at uh, that in a graph um, this large vertical section, uh, the equivalence point would be inside that. So you can be asked to find the point of equivalence and from then um, draw a graph of neutralization for that particular reaction. Um, so looking at this reaction, what I've been told that in the flask we have, um, we've been given the volume as well as the concentration and it's HNO3, so that's a strong acid. And in the burette, we've also been given the volume and concentration, and we have a strong base, NaOH. So because we would be trying to neutralize the acid, whatever, or it can be a base in the flask. So we would first find the moles of the, the acid, in this case, in the flask. So that would be 0 0.025 times 0 0.1. And that would get us... 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus 3 and now this is because in the biorette we might have and um, the volume of base in excess and that's why we need to find the moles of the acid of base um, in the flask so then we could do the moles divided by the concentration um, of this base and that will get us the volume that's that we require uh, for this react for this neutralization to occur. So I've got 0 0.0125. Now just remember that this is in decimeters cubed, and this is in the graph will be in centimeters cubed. So we can just times that by 100, and that will get us 12.5 centimeter cubed. So now by drawing this graph, so in the flask we have a strong acid. So this means that we should be starting around 1 or 2. So it should be, the graph should start from there. And we have a strong base at the end, so we should be finishing 
around a pH of 13 to 14. And looking at this, so the neutralization occurs at 12.5, so around halfway between 0 and 25. Um, so this is where our vertical, the vertical long line will be. Now on to drawing uh, this graph, we'll start with around pH 1. Um, and then we'll go up really slowly until we hit 12.5, uh, so around there. And then from 12.5 there will be a very, a very large increase, so it's going to be this vertical section uh, until we get very close to 13.14 and then there will be a very small increase again uh, until we get to our uh, pH around 13.14. So this middle section, what you need to be um, aware of that the middle part of it should be around where the uh, where the neutralization pH is, because it's a strong base, um, strong acid in in this case, and then the neutralization pH would be around seven. So now looking into another example. So in this case, we've been given um, a weak base in the flask and we've been given a strong acid in the biorette. So first we would find the moles of the base in the flask. So that would be 0 0.03 times one, which would be 0 0.03. Um, and then we would find the, the volume that's required of the acid. So 0 0.03 divided by one, that would still be 0 0.03. So that's in decimeters cubed time, we would multiply that by 100 and we would get 30 centimeters cubed. Choosing suitable indicators. So acid-base titration uses indicators to find the equivalence point. And you, sh you need to be able to pick a appropriate indicator as that indicator changes color within the pH range of equivalence or the vertical portion. So different indicators have different um, color changes at different pH ranges. So you need to be able to pick a indicator which will have the color change within the pH range of equivalence, which is the vertical portion. So the two common examples are phenylphthalein and methyl orange, um, which come up a lot in um, A-level chemistry. So I'm just gonna look at them for this. So looking at the first example, so strong acid and strong base. So I will look at the vertical portion. So I can see that's around from uh, three to around, let's say 10. So that's the, that's the range um, the, of the vertical portion. So now looking at my indicators, I can see that both of them would fit inside that range. So I could say that for this strong acid, strong base, both of these indicators are fine as that's inside the range. We're now looking at strong acid weak base, so I can see that the this this um, vertical portion, so it starts around let's say three, but it finishes uh, just just above seven. So around, I can say around seven point five for this. So I need to pick an indicator uh, which will be around that range. So I can see that phenyl failing, it's above that range, so I can cross this out. So I can't use phenyl failing for this, but methyl orange is in that range. So I can say that methyl orange could be used as an indicator for this. Okay, so now looking into weak acid and strong base. Um, so I can see that the bottom of this vertical line, vertical section is just below seven. Um, and the top is just around, uh, just, it would be above 10, just, just above 10. So methyl orange, looking at methyl orange, I can cross that out straight away as um, the pH range is far too below um, the range that I can use. But phenyl failing, it would fit as my pH, it, this is just below seven and 8.2 would be around here and 10 would just be below that. So this would fit inside and um, that pH range so I can use um, phenyl failing for this. So next, weak acid and weak base. So what I can see is there's no vertical section for this um, and we would not be able to use either of those so phenyl failing or methyl orange usually you wouldn't be able to use any indicator for this 
um, and you can be asked what you can use instead and then you can write you you, you could use ph meter or that ph probe and that would work fine and to find the point of a neutralization thank you so much for watching this video if you did like this video don't forget to subscribe to see more of these and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up thank you